Welcome to day three of the Jingle Bells training. Today's super exciting. We have Bradley Sowash, guest teaching, and he's going, he's made a cute little video on how to interpret Jingle Bells in a jazz style. So I'm going to show you the video and then I'm going to break down different ways that you can work on it. So Bradley is going to be one of the teachers in the Piano Connect conference that I am coordinating in January. It's actual, I like to call it a virtual retreat more than a conference. Um, so it's not just sitting there listening to presentations. It's, um, it's very much like this. So you're on the other side, you have your piano and all of these amazing teachers from around the world are teaching creative activities like how to make a melody, how to teach or learn basic improvisation and composition and just generally how to get more creative at the piano. So I hope you can join us mid-January, look at pianoconnect.org. So here you get to witness the brilliance of Bradley Sowash, who is a wonderful jazz pianist and um, he specializes in teaching classical pianists how to start improvising in a jazz style. And he always makes it really fun and accessible. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen and make his video. He wanted to pop in, but he is away from internet this week. So he made this awesome video instead. Okay, can everybody see this? Can anybody be off mute and just say if they can see Bradley? So I can't see you anymore. Yes, yes I can see it. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, I'm going to press play, and then can you tell me if you can hear it? Hi, this is Bradley Sowash. Yeah. Yay! Technology for the win. Okay, here he goes. Enjoy. Jazz pianist and educator, and today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to jazz up jingle bells. Let's start with the tune. We're going to play it in the key of C, so the starting note is E. It's pretty simple. E, E, E. E, G, C, D, E. Now you can figure out the rest on your own. To make it jazzy, what we want to do is syncopate these quarter notes. And we can do that by displacing them to the left or the right, which is a very cerebral way to think about it. But if we just let our intuition take over, we might have better success. So let's turn on a little bit of a swing beat and see where our intuition leads us. Ready and jingle bells, maybe. Now, every time I play that, it might be a little bit different and yours will be different. Don't worry about setting it. Just have some fun with that rhythm. Let the rhythm dance rather than be stayed on those quarter notes. The next bit we need to learn is the harmony. And I wrote down the chords for you right here. It really only has four chords, C, F, G, and a D, which is a secondary dominant for you music theory nerds. And so it's look how symmetrical it is. Four measures of C, and in the second half, four measures of C. Very easy to remember. Then it's F and C in both halves. Really, the only difference is the first half has a D7 to G7, and the second half has a G7 to C. So we can put these chords together with the melody right now. Let's have a listen. Two, ready, in. You get the idea, right? All right. Okay, so let's try that together. So everybody be on mute and just do your simple little chords. You can play whole notes. Um, or you can do any of the left hand patterns that we've done, but I want you to try and just jazz up the, the, um, the rhythm of the right hand melody. Okay, so there's no right or wrong. We're all gonna sound very different. And um, just see what comes out. Just try and syncopate a little. So again, I like to put it in an octave higher just so your hands don't get in the way, but it would just be like. Do whole notes like that in your left hand. Okay, so just have fun with it, see what comes out. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Play around 
just try to jazz that up. Okay, let's see what he says next. But we want to make these chords a lot more jazzy. So what we're going to do is add sixes to some of these chords and even a ninth. Instead of C, we're going to play C, E, G, A. That gives us that C6 sound. <laughs> you can hear that kind of 1940s happy jazz color with that six. Same on the F chord. F, A, C, D is our root position version of a F6 chord. Just and then to the D7, D, F sharp, A, C is a D7. We're going to have a little ninth to that because that is part of the melody. And on the G9, we're going to start with a G7 and add that 9, root 3, 5, 7, 9. So those are our root position chords, but we're going to play those in our right hand with the melody note on top. So instead of playing C, E, G, A, since the top note we need to be the melody, we're going to play that in our pinky and play the chords underneath. So here's your G, A, C. Now we still have a C6 chord, but it's all in the right hand in a position where the melody note comes out. You can play it like that or play the whole chord each time. <laughs> now I wrote these chords down for you. You can see here that the chord we just played from the bottom up, G, A, C, E, with the melody note on top. It when the melody goes down. to F, we want to play an F6 chord, but we need There's the pencil, version right? of that that has our pinky on the root because that is the melody note. So we're going to play it here, A, C, D, F. You can hear that. Okay, and back to the C6 chord. Now we have a D9 chord, and that's not as hard as it sounds. Just a D chord, D, F sharp, A, C, that's a D7, and we add that nine. We're gonna play that mostly in our right hand, but the left hand's gonna play the root so that we have enough fingers to play F sharp, A, C, E. And when we get to the G, the notes are F, A, B, D. That's a G9 chord without a root. So we'll play that root down below. And now it sounds complete. So let's... Okay, so if you have a pencil, take a moment and write those down really quickly. So in your C chord, that's the voicing from the bottom to the top. G, A, C, E. We get to the F chord, instead of a first inversion, you're just throwing in that sixth, the D. So A, C, D, F. Um, and then the D. So that D would be in your left hand. And then F sharp, A, C, E. And then for the G chord, your G would be in the left hand. And then you have the F, A, B, D. Okay, so those you're going to have to practice or write them down. And you can ignore these for now if, if needed. A finger is to play F sharp A, C, E. Chord without a root. So we'll play that root down below. And now it sounds complete. So let's put that together with a swing beat. And yours might have a little different rhythm, but that's how we want jazz to be. Ready, in. F6 with the F on top. Here's that F. Now I know what you're thinking. Whoa, what was going on in that <laughs> left so hand? Fun. Well, that's the accompaniment, the walking bass. It's easier than it sounds. It's just a pattern. On all the chords, you can play one, two, three, five, or root, second, third, fifth. So for example, for a C chord, one is C, two is D, three is E, five is G. One, two, three, five, but you're gonna wanna play it in the bass. One, two, three, five. You can do that simple go-to pattern on any chord, but just for variety and convenience in the hand, when we get to the G7, we're going to play a different pattern, which is root or one, seven, six, five, 
G F E D. So these are patterns you can plug into many tunes. Let's take a look at how that all comes together. So one, two, three, five. Now I do that same pattern on the F chord. Back to the C. Here's that D9. The notes are D, E, F sharp, A, or one, two, three, five. Make up an F sharp in there. And here's the G where we're going to play a different pattern. One, seven, six, five. One, seven, six, five, G, F, E, D. Just as before. Here's your F. And here, it's a G chord, but we'll just play single notes. That's what I had in mind. And now we're under the C6. So let's put together that whole thing with a beat. A two, a one, two, three, four, change all bells. Here's one more little trick on your last chord, C6. The last bit, we're going to make a few changes to that. Instead of playing just a C on the bottom, we're at a G for a little more thickness. But here's the real trick. Put your pinky up a whole step. Ah, that's a great ending chord. It's called a C69, and it's not hard to put in the hand, and it just sounds so wonderful. As you put this together, please feel free to adjust any aspects, particularly rhythms, to suit your personal taste. I'm Bradley Sowash, and until next time, enjoy your creative music-making journey. How awesome. How awesome was that? I think that's just brilliant. He did all of that in like eight minutes. Okay, so let's do some of this together. Um, let me change my camera. Um, okay, so play the C chord quickly. So it's G, A, C, E. It's just a first or second inversion C chord with an A. So anytime you see C, that's what you're going to play. And you might have to practice all these. They might not come right away. Okay, F chord. You're going to have A, C, D, F. Here's your D7. F sharp, A, C, E. And then the G. F, A, B, D. So those are the chords. You have to practice them just like anything else. Et cetera. Or sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm getting confused. Okay, so you just have to work them in and practice. Okay, the bass line is really fun. So anytime you see C, you just go one, two, three, five. I love the Santa hat. I agree, Leona. And then the F, you just start on F. One, two, three, five. Go to the C. D. G. You can stay, keep the same pattern at G, or you can walk down. Okay, so let's end it and you can either do whatever you feel is best for you. Maybe you wanna try that bass line and just do straight melody. Or maybe you wanna do the bass line and do a jazz melody. Or maybe you're ready for the chords. Like you got this, then try the whole melody with the chords. Yeah, 
you can hear I'm no Bradley Sowash, but I, <laughs> I can have fun with it and I can, I can um, do the little exercises and so can you. I am not a jazz pianist by any stretch of the imagination, but with these tools, I'm able to have fun with it. Okay, so let's try it together. We'll go a little slowly and just take whatever level you feel you're at. And this is a great one to just practice and really learn those chords and watch that video again. All right, let's try it together. A one, two, a one, two, here we go. like a first inversion C, but you throw an A and change your C to a D. And I'm going to change my camera. All right, thumbs up. How did you do? <laughs> did you get it? That was, a, that was a big one, wasn't it? That had a lot of info. That was like, whoo, that's like a, a month's long lesson right there in eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, tomorrow I'm going to teach you a much more mellow kind of six to eight way of interpreting. And again, I highly encourage you to join us in Piano Connect. You're going to learn all sorts of things like this from eight different world renowned teachers on all sorts of different creative activities. So pianoconnect.org, please tell people about it. And there'll be concerts. I'm going to play a concert. There's going to be a jazz concert by Jeremy Siskins. And there's going to be Forrest Kinney's best friend is doing a vocal recital of pieces he wrote with Forrest on Sunday. Yes, there will be a recording of this sent out to everybody. Anything else I missed in the chat? You're welcome, Leona. You're welcome, Sharon. And I love the Santa hat too. He's always fun. <laughs> He always makes everything very fun. All right, I think we did well. We did that 20 minutes, not so bad. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us.